It's June 2. This is the news on PBCJ. I'm Simone Absalom. As of Tuesday morning, two positive cases have been recorded in Jamaica for the COVID-19 pandemic, bringing the number of confirmed cases in the island to 588. The two new cases are males who recently returned to the island on Royal Caribbean's Adventure of the Seas vessel. They bring to 91 the total number of imported cases to Jamaica. The health ministry says there is also an increase in the number of recoveries, which now stands at 322 after 11 more people were released from care. Schools will be partially opened come June 8. Minister with Responsibility for Education, Youth and Information, Carl Samuda, says 76,000 students set to take CAPE exams at CSEC and 56,000 students set to take CSEC alone will enter the classroom for revision before taking their exams. We get more in this report from Carl Francis. Those exams will include CAPE papers. Speaking at a press conference on Sunday, Minister Samuda gave a schedule for the exams and the reopening of schools in September. On June 26, we will announce the students who have been placed in schools, which would normally come through the PEP. On July the 3rd, the CXC um, refresher program that we have put in place will end. On July the 13th, the CXC exams will start. That will include CAPE and the CXC from the 27th, as we had announced earlier. It has been brought forward through a, a process of collaboration with our colleagues in the Caribbean and the leadership of the uh, Overseas Examination uh, Commission. And it was felt that our desire to have these exams out of the way, certainly for Jamaica, for independence. Um, we arrived at a date of July the 13th. On July the 31st, CAPE will end, only CAPE. And by August the 4th, the CXC will end. Um, September 7th, all classes will start in the new school year for those students who were not involved. The education minister says no exams will be done locally this year. He explained that the assessment will give teachers the chance to see how students have progressed. And where students are found to be incapable really of going on to another level. And in some cases, parents might get a little concerned about the progress of their children. We will have a program to hold discussions, to dialogue with the parents, explain the situation to the parents, solicit the support of the parents, and make the recommendations that will be satisfactory for all concerned. For the news on PBCJ, I'm Carol Francis. The validation of applications on behalf of 22,000 workers for the business employee support and the transfer of cash, best cash, component of the government's COVID allocation of resources for employees program is being finalized. The Ministry of Finance and Public Service received applications from 300 employers. Portfolio Minister Dr. Nigel Clark says that the payment of the best cash grants will commence as soon as the validation process is completed. Initially, after the first round of eligibility was established for, uh, applic for, uh, for applicants, there were over 100,000 bank accounts that were invalid. And they were invalid for a number of reasons. They were, you know, wrong account number, wrong branch number, the name on the account didn't match the name of the applicant, the account was dormant or deemed inactive, the identification on the account was expired. Uh, in some cases, we had, for certain financial institutions, where persons who had an account under a trustee relationship with a guardian, a parent, or an adult, but who passed the age of 18 were sending money to that account. But after 18, 
uh, having a trustee account is no longer for certain institutions possible. And let me just explain that. You know, you have Mary Brown, the mother, who sets up an account uh, with her daughter uh, when the daughter is in elementary school. And it's in uh, an account for the daughter in care of the mother or, it, or, or the other way around. Once that child reaches 18, that child needs an account for herself or himself. So that was a lot of invalid, invalidity because of that and other reasons for invalidity. We, were, we communicated by text message to all of those persons whose accounts were deemed invalid. And remember, the validation of a bank account, the government relies on the banking sector. It relies on the financial institutions. And there's little the government can do if the bank says, hey, this account you know, is not valid. There's something wrong with it. Having communicated with applicants about the numbers of invalid accounts that we were receiving, uh, we are able for that number to be worked down from 100,000 to uh, last week it was at about 50,000. Best Cash is designed to support businesses in tourism and related sectors that have retained employees whose taxable income is $1.5 million or less per annum. It is one of several components of the CARE program which is intended to cushion individuals and businesses against the economic impact of the coronavirus COVID-19. This week into next week, we are working on the validation for the general grants and so I want the public to understand that that validation process is quite involved because the number of occupational groups uh, is, is quite large and the database for the validation you know, will come from a different source. So the database for the validation of uh, taxi, for PPV licensee will come from the transport authority. The database for Juta and Jekyll and Maxi drivers will come from TPDCO and the database uh, for bar owners and uh, barbers and hairdressers will come from the Ministry of Local Government. Dr. Clark says the validation process will be subject to review by the Auditor General's Department as the case for the other components of the program. And once completed, the transfers for the general grants will begin. The Minister was speaking at a virtual press conference at Jamaica House on Sunday. Plans are already being executed for this year's staging of the Jamaica Festival Song Competition. Culture and Entertainment Minister Olivia Grange says several changes have been made in how the program will be executed. Due to social distance requirements, the event will take a TV and social media format to give a wider audience a chance to participate. Ms. Grange says with the finals set for July, the country will know the winning song in time for the independence celebrations. The top 10 songs will be announced later this week. Road fatalities are down by 20% compared to the same period last year. The Road Safety Unit says 159 persons have been killed in 144 fatal crashes. The unit says 49 motorcyclists account for 31% of road fatalities this year. A breakdown of the figures from the unit further revealed that 33 pedestrians, 17 pedal cyclists, 6 motorcycle pillion passengers, 20 private motor vehicle passengers, 6 passengers of commercial motor vehicles are among the number of people killed on the nation's road since the start of the year. The PBCJ wishes to convey its condolences to the family and friends of former head of the Child Development Agency, Alison McLean. The PBCJ joins the voices issuing praise and sympathy from local and international organizations in reaction to the passing of Mrs. McLean. Mrs. McLean, also a former permanent secretary in the Ministry of Entertainment, Gender Affairs and Sport, was the representative for the UN Women Multi-Country Office for the Caribbean. She died Sunday night after ailing for some time. She was 59 years old. And Gabrielle Thompson now takes us through the business report. In Monday's trading session, the JSE Combined Index declined by 3,116 points to close at under 400,000 units. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 80 stocks, of which 36 advanced, 32 declined and 12 traded firm. The Junior Market Index declined by 15 points to close at under 3,000 units. 
Stocks Advanced 41834 Investments Limited, Access Financial Services Limited, and AMG Packaging and Paper. Stocks declined for Berger Paints Jamaica, Cargo Handlers Limited, and Caribbean Cream Limited. Trading firm were 138 Student Living Jamaica, CAC 2000 Limited, and Siboney Group Limited. Wigton Wind Farm Limited Ordinary Shares was the volume leader with 5.9 million units, followed by Carreras Limited with 5.2 million units, and Sagicor Select Funds Limited Financial with 3.8 million units. Now for the foreign exchange. The U.S. dollar on Monday, June 1, ended trading at $143.06. The Canadian dollar sold for an average $106.17. The pound sterling traded for $177.04. And the euro ended trading at $161.53. Oil prices rose on Tuesday to near three-month highs on expectations that major producers would agree to extend output cuts that have shored up prices during a video conference likely to be held this week. Brent crude futures rose 97 cents to settle at $39.29 a barrel. West Texas intermediate crude futures climbed 88 cents to $36.32 a barrel. That's it for the Business Report on PBCJ. I'm Gabrielle Thompson. In regional news, the Bahamas is seeking to monetize its air. This from Tourism and Aviation Minister Diancio Diagler. Minister of Tourism and Aviation, the Honorable Dionisio Diagler, says the country could begin imposing flight fees as early as January as the Bahamas move toward monetizing its airspace. In a process started under the former Minister of Transport and Aviation, the Honorable Glennis Hannah Martin, the Bahamas began negotiations with the Federal Aviation Administration regarding the management of Bahamian airspace, which is managed by the U.S., which collects millions annually from aircraft which passed through the Bahamas. Last November, Mr. Diagola shared that after putting out a request for proposal, the committee appointed to evaluate the RFP process rejected all proposals. Minister Diagola told reporters during the cabinet meeting of last week that the country hired a consultant firm to get guidance on airspace charging and collection. That um, consultancy is almost at an end and they are um, ready to make their recommendations. Um, And so once we receive that recommendation, uh, we will roll it out, um, a fee structure, hopefully by the 1st of July, uh, because it takes six months for it to take effect. So you have to advise the airline industry at least six months in advance before you impose a charge on them so they can adjust their ticket prices accordingly. So even if we were to roll it out on the 1st of July, it wouldn't take effect until the 1st of January. we're, we're, we're sort of heading towards that, that deadline, um, but it's very interesting, um, very, very fascinating, and we've done a lot of work on it, and we think that we're close to a solution um, on how to finally make something off our God-given airspace. Antigua and Barbuda has reopened its international airport amid stringent health protocols to limit the spread of the novel coronavirus. It's the first CARICOM country to do so. Chief Executive Officer of the Antigua and Barbuda Airport Authority, Yuleta Francis, says the health protocols that cover the diverse range of operations at the VC Bird International Airport will be in full effect to coincide with the opening of the island's borders. The authority says it will restrict traffic through the terminal to travelers and airport staff. Don't expect heavy sales just yet. The words of caution came from President of Shagonas Chamber of Commerce, Vishnu Sharan, to business owners as they reopened their stores on Monday in Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. Sharan spoke to TTT News' Sherilyn Lewis. President of the Shagonas Chamber of Commerce, Vishnu Charan, welcomes the reopening of retail industries and he's calling on business owners to comply to the health guidelines. It's welcome news, I think. Uh, as was indicated previously, that if things continue to be well and there are no new cases, um, that business would be back to normal. However, I just want to uh, encourage all the businesses that are going to be reopened that it's a new normal. We need to we need to protect the shoppers. 
Mr. Chan is also advising business owners that sales won't be as normal as before to have some patience. Also implore the business community to understand that as we reopen, things are not going to be as it was before. The business uh, level that we were accustomed to seeing in the past is not going to be there instantly. So we need to be patient. We need to really understand and take step by step and to know that um, it is only when the confidence, self-confidence comes back in the customers and people to go out there um, to do the shopping that we're going to see business um, rise in a couple of months' time. The Shogonish Chamber head is also encouraging employees to, if necessary, refrain from having all their employees come out at once. Many businesses will not be able to employ the full force and to have all their staff come out to work immediately. Um, so we expect, uh, if that is the case, that there will be staggered hours of work or staggered days of work. But we are encouraging the business community again to um, try their best to maintain their staff. The Prime Minister announced on Saturday that all retail businesses are to close at 6 p.m. Sherilyn Lewis, TTT News. The Guyana Elections Commission, or GCOM head Vincent Alexander, believes that investigations into alleged electoral fraud should not be feared. We get more in this report from Isaiah Brathwaite of InfoHub. Those allegations are that hundreds voted but were not in the country, dead persons voted on stamped ballots and missing oath of identity, among others. Only recently, it was disclosed that the names of 600 persons who are alleged to have voted but were not in the jurisdiction, were submitted to GCOM. That information was then submitted to the chief immigration officer. Alexander is of the view that if the opposition is claiming to have won the elections, then they should have no issue with investigations into the matter of electoral fraud. If one is confident that nothing untoward would have occurred, I think it's in one's interest to expose these accusations to scrutiny so that your own disposition of confidence could be reinforced and ascertained. However, leaders of the People's Progressive Party have threatened to file court action should GCOM investigate the claims. Commissioner Alexander posited that it was the PPP who advocated for transparency before the recount process began and are now finding ways to prevent investigations into matters raised. Transparency has been interpreted to mean that people must know all that's happening. Let's broadcast the tabulation and all of that. What is occurring in terms of what AP and UAFC has done can enhance that process. Of transparency, let's see and know everything. But the advocates of transparency have now found other terms <laughs> to argue that these things should not occur. Nevertheless, a list of names of persons who are alleged to have voted on Elections Day but were out of the jurisdiction was submitted to the GCOM chairperson by the Chief Immigration Officer. Isaiah Braffitt for InfoHub. In sports, guaranteed biosecure facilities and the addition of a medical doctor to the touring party. Those form part of the extreme lens to develop and implement critical social distancing and sanitization protocols for the Windy's seven-week tour of England. Cricket West Indies outlined some of the strict protocols, stating it would not have backed plans for the three test series unless it was totally convinced the measures could keep players and staff completely safe from COVID-19. Chief Executive Officer Johnny Grave says talks between the regional governing body and the host, England and Wales Cricket Board, had the health and safety of players as the utmost priority and that it would not compromise that at any stage. In the weather report, a tropical depression has formed over the Atlantic. 
At 4 a.m., the center of the depression was located near latitude 19.6 degrees north, longitude 92.1 degrees west. The depression is moving toward the west-northwest near 4 kilometers per hour. The depression is forecast to move slowly west-southwestward or southwestward this afternoon and tonight and meander over the southern bay of Campeche through late Wednesday. Maximum sustained winds have increased to near 55 kilometers with higher gusts. Slow strengthening is expected during the next couple of days and the depression is forecast to become a tropical storm later today. Tropical depression 3 is not a threat to Jamaica. The Meteorological Service will continue to monitor the progress of this system though. And that's the news on PBCJ. Thanks so much for watching.